Hey party people, this is a fashion illustration tips and tricks video. I'll be illustrating the figure that I flash in the beginning of this video and throwing in a bunch of tips, tricks, hacks, whatever you want to call it into the mix. First of all, I'm using this illustration from Alphonse Mucha as inspiration. I'm not trying to follow the pose limb for limb, but I like the basic gesture of it, so I'm following that. And if you're not using a reference, um, it really helps, you know, if you're making something from your imagination, it really helps to draw the body first and then the clothes on top to make sure that your figure is solid underneath the clothes. It's like when you build anything without a strong foundation, everything else can go wrong. And one of the things that is helpful is to do um, a number line marking off your heads you know how when we say eight head figure ten head figure you know mark off the ten heads if you want to know more about my proportions you can watch my figure on how to develop a ten head figure but mark them off so you can kind of eyeball and keep your vertical proportions in line with the proportions number line let's talk about paper for a second the difference between hot press and cold press watercolor paper hot press is smooth and cold press is textured and you know they all come in the all the weights like they all come in 90 pound 140 pound and 300 pound the texture on the surface you know on cold press paper can disguise some unevenness in painting and can help render some textures better and hot press paper is generally better for silky looks shiny looks and fine details Today, I am rendering silky looks and fine details on cold pressed paper because I planned poorly. <laughs> I don't actually have any hot pressed paper big enough to fit this figure, and I just started drawing the figure without looking at what kind of paper I had. Good job, Zoe, but you get the idea. Most watercolorists, you know, they have their own paper preferences. I, I like arches. I like the Canson Heritage with the orange cover. I like Bockingford. And of course, there are many I haven't tried. However, you know, tracing paper is just tracing paper. You know, most tracing paper is whatever except for Canson. Canson tracing paper is oddly plasticky. It feels more like vellum. It's very smooth and it smears the graphite. And I, I don't like drawing on paper that doesn't have any tooth where it's too slick. You know, you need a little friction to push against to draw. And that's true of any kind of drawing paper. So, yeah. So I take my drawing and I trace it onto my final watercolor paper using a light box. And if you don't have a light box, you have options. You can put your paper up to a clean window on a sunny day. You know, make sure it's taped down at the corner so that it doesn't move around. But that works really well. I've done it before. If you have a glass top table, whether it's a coffee table, dining table, whatever, turn the lights off in your room and put a bright lamp under the glass and use that as a light box. Because that is essentially a light box, you know, like a light under glass. When you're drawing, only lay down the basic shapes before you start painting. You know, it's a waste of time to draw a lot more and you can smear the graphite, which makes for muddy watercolor. I like hard lead, you know, H. HB, but nothing much skinnier than that because if you do, you can start kind of carving the paper. So each HB lead, you know, keep it sharp, but not like, you know, knife stabby. When I start painting, when it comes to gouache and watercolor, I do prefer gouache because I love how really opaque I can get it as well as make it super sheer depending on the amount of water that I use. So what I do is I mix up three or four concentrations, you know, different dilutions of water to the same color of watercolor or gouache. So I start with the skin color. This dress is going to be black, but whatever dress color I was going to use, I mix those up and then I have different amounts of water in each one. The lightest color should match whatever fabric you're using, whatever skin tone you hope to accomplish, et cetera, et cetera. And then the darker colors, the more intense concentrations of color, 
are going to be your shadow tones. And I like to have at least two shadow tones. I think it makes for a richer illustration. Okay. I usually, when I'm doing like really fast stuff, like on marker, like one shadow color is okay, even though I typically do more than that. But if I'm taking the time to do watercolor, I want those extra details. If you want shadows with a crisp edge, you have to let the first layer of paint dry. If you want soft blended shadows, you need to paint the shadows while the first layer of paint is still wet. And if you want the blended look, your shadow has to be darker than you think it is because your paper is still wet. And so when you lay the paint down, it's automatically going to get diluted by the wetness of the paper. This is why you should always have another piece of scrap paper next to you to test colors and you know test things like how the dark shadow is going to look on top of wet paper, all those things. I always have a little scrap of paper next to me, the same kind, like watercolor paper, okay? So yes, some many formulations of gouache you can lift off of watercolor paper. Basically, you want to wait till it's a little bit damp so that you're not lifting, you know, all these bordering areas, but apply a little bit of clean water and kind of dilute whatever paint is on the paper and then pick it up with a cloth. I know the cloth on screen looks really dirty, but it's actually like it's just stains and not active wet paint on the cloth. So use a clean cloth and dab it up. And you can do this a couple of times. Don't do it too much. Otherwise, you'll start like ruining the surface of the paper. But yeah, um, many formulations of gouache, you can lift a little bit. Okay. I mean, try not to rely on it. It's not as dependable as eraser and pencil, <laughs> but you can lift it a little bit. And uh, for this one, I don't want blended shadows, especially I'm doing a ton of ruching at the waist. And if I let my shadows blend there, it's going to just look like a weird blob. It's not going to have the crispness of all the wrinkles and pleating that happens with the ruching. And so I got to let all the paint underneath dry like 137% before I start adding more ruching. And I do this several times where I let the paint dry in between each level of shadowing. Another thing is, with gouache, you can layer them like I layered the light black, the sheer black chiffon on top of my skin tone. But you can only do that if, again, your paint from before, the legs and the shoes, are 712% dry. Otherwise, you will end up with a big just mess because all the, the colors are going to start swirling together. And even then, I like to test that on a little scrap piece of paper because I'm paranoid. <laughs> I have never once regretted my paranoia, all right? This illustration took about, uh, the raw footage for this illustration was one hour and 38 minutes. And of course, I turned the camera off while I was walking around waiting for the paint to dry. But it is still an hour and 38 minutes of work only to be ruined if you just didn't wait for your paint to dry, your first layer. So just think about it carefully as to what kind of effect you're looking for. If you want, you know, a big blended look with using a lot of water to smear the edges or if you need the layers to remain crisp and separate, you know, stacking layers of paint on top of other layers or if you are uh, needing those crisp edges for that kind of ruching detail. And, you know, I already have a video on how to do sheer fabrics with marker. I'll link that in the description box below. But, you know, the basic components are the same with watercolor. You just have to wait longer for the ink to dry. You know, marker ink also takes a second to dry. It's so much faster than paint, so we don't think so. But marker, it can be a little wet for a little bit of time. You know, that's how you're able to blend marker. I also have a marker techniques video where I show you how to blend marker into gradients if you want to look at that. Let's talk about the beading and the sequins. 
First of all, I am taking a black fine liner. It's a 0.7 millimeter. So it's a fat fine liner, but it's still a fine liner. And I'm putting sequins all over the place, little beads all over the place. Here it is in real time where you can see how kind of slowly I'm going. I'm not going everywhere, but I'm letting the ink make a circle. I'm just stipple, stipple, stipple. I'm letting the ink make a circle to create the size that I want. So keep that in mind. You know, it's all these ways to manipulate wet media that help your illustration along. For opaque white touches, like the sparkle and shine I want to show off in this dress, I hate white gel pen. Uh, I've, I've tried so many brands, you know, the Sakura Jelly, and that one is a favorite. Like, I just do not like white gel pens. Um, the only times I've used them successfully is to create two single dots, one in each eye, to put in that little anime sparkle dot in eyeballs. The few times that I draw faces. So, no. I do like these Posca paint pens, P-O-S-C-A. They're opaque pens, paint pens. They come in different colors and sizes. I have the white in many sizes. You can buy the colors separately. Um, I know you can at least buy the white one separately because I have several of them. And this one is a 0.7 millimeter. And it is, it's a little bit fat, you know, and you got to learn how to control the water flow. And you got to control, you know, you got to pump the little nib. But overall ease of usage and everything is still so much easier to me than the gel pen and they come in fatter and you know sharpie they make a white out pen that i love for fatter white dots and lines i'm not using it here because i want really really little dots another thing i like is the copic opaque white it's just this opaque white paint in a tiny little pot it's just called copic yes like the marker brand copic opaque white it's really fantastic for these little touches, these little sparkle crosses that I'm doing. I can also sometimes use white gouache with as little water added possible. And it's just really nice to add some white touches, some little shine spots, some sparkle crosses. And if you find that you have made sparkle crosses too fat for your liking, like you want them to look more delicate, what I'm doing here is taking my black fine liner and kind of erasing those lines like scooping up the paint while it's still wet and that's why I am uh, kind of cleaning up the pen nib on a scrap piece of paper here taking more of the excess paint off and you see I've kind of shimmied and erased so to speak the extra white using the tip of my fine liner and in doing that, you're doing two things. You are scooping up some of the paint and then whatever black you leave behind, it makes the white pop out more. You know, I've taught many times in color theory that contrast makes things pop. So having a little black cross behind the white sparkle cross um, makes the white cross stand out more. Okay, makes it pop more. And you could do that to a few of the sequins too if you like. No piggy. And overall... You know, sometimes if I really want something to be punchy, I'll go in with a pencil to outline a few things. I don't think this illustration needed it, so I didn't. Graphite is great. It's easiest to work with, but it can be shiny if you tilt the paper at certain angles. So it's up to you if you like that look. If you don't like it, you can use color pencils instead for finishing. You can try a black, a dark gray, more to mimic the pencil or a softer color, you know, I've seen people outline skin tone in a darker skin tone so that it looks a little bit more subtle while giving it a little bit of pop. So those are some options for you. So this was super fun to paint. It's been a long time since I just sat and had a nice painting session and just 
painted whatever I wanted. This is not a dress that exists in the world. I mean, maybe it does. I was just something I decided I wanted to paint because I was thinking about Halloween and I was thinking about the Salem witches. Um, excuse me, the witch, the people who are accused of being witches in Salem and just thinking about Halloween and I live in California. So yeah, like it's like summer Halloween over here. It just doesn't get very cold. Anyway, that's what inspired me with today's illustration. I also always really love painting red hair. It's, I don't know. I just like it. Anyway, as usual, drop me all your questions below. Uh, I'll link to some cool related videos in the description box. You know, drop me your video requests in the comments below and I'll talk to you soon.